at was held at gunpoint. I knew that any reasons that I could give them, they could squeeze the trigger. I had the Rambo knife on him. Another gentleman was holding a gun as well, pointed it at me. I just got arrested by these people behind. All right, guys, um, it's your homie, Man Like Nels. And today I have to share my story with you that recently happened two days ago. I was held at gunpoint by the Met Police and perhaps even the stage of, that's like higher than them, maybe the SWAT, I don't know really what the names are, but they entered my bus at 2.36 on the 1st of August at Pimlico Station. Uh, I was wrongly accused of holding a Rambo knife and they basically entered the bus with the laser and pointed it at me. Another gentleman was holding a gun as well, pointed it at me and went with the entire drill. Uh, it was not a joke, it was real life, you know, when your heart starts to pound and you're like, this is not a drill. So uh, obviously asked me to hold my hands up, so I did. I proceeded, I complied to the law. They mentioned a certain law which supposedly uh, give, gave them the right to do what they did uh, and proceeded to handcuff me. My phone dropped immediately because obviously I lifted my hands up and I told them because uh, I knew that any reasons that I could give them, they could squeeze the trigger. Um, so I told them, yeah, my phone just dropped. Officer, make sure you pick up my phone and search my bag. You can see my work clothes. Now, I work in central London when I'm not here at the studio. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I balance my life, work in the city and then handle myself as a producer. So this just made me feel like less of a citizen because if you know anything about me, I get mine clean. I've never been affiliated with that conversation whatsoever. So someone that's attempting to follow the law like myself should never find themselves in that situation. Um, so yeah, so as he has the handcuffs on me and I'm now you know, coming down the bus and I'm outside, they're reciting all of the, what do you want to call it? Let's say the generic lines that they always give you. Oh, you fit the description. We've received a call that someone with dreadlocks and the gray top and some black trainers had the Rambo knife on him. Um, and in fact, there was three youngsters on the bus that perhaps were involved in that conversation. They looked like they were about this, you know, and it was blatant that I had nothing to do with that. All of the other people in, on the bus uh, just stood there and watched. Some filmed, they weren't really trying to give me the footage. So if anyone was present that day actually and has any footage, please don't hesitate to send it to man because I'm really trying to get justice for this situation. Uh, I don't believe that it's fair. I should never have to be in such a situation. Uh, especially after I just left work and I'm going home, you know. Um, I've been in many scary situations before, but to see a laser, you know, pointed at you uh, and you processing that there's a laser on you, there's a gun and some policeman that kind of, you get me? Because <laughs> obviously it's all, um, it's all stories until it happens to you, you know. Uh, and then as we were outside, the gentleman that was you know asking me all of these questions uh made it blatant that they had nothing on me so within 15 minutes uh they had to let me go but yeah it just reminded me of what a ruthless system we're in and what it means for ethnic people or african descendants that live in europe you know so in terms of what I had to do afterwards, I had to go to the doctors this morning to obviously inform them of the situation. I've been kind of troubled at night. Sleep has not really been fluid as it normally is. Uh, as you can imagine, I've been kind of up and down trying to process the whole thing because it happened so quickly. Um, thankfully, my work have been quite understanding of the situation. Um, obviously I sent them the doctor's form and whatnot. So now man's just kind of um, in limbo, trying to understand how uh, I'm ever going to be able to work or take some time off work to kind of process such a scenario. So yeah, so 
I thought I'd share my story because we know that London is in flames right now. A lot of things are happening in the news. Uh, we're seeing incidents all across the country, let alone what's happening here in London. There's a lot of, obviously, gang violence and knife crime that's involved in the conversation. So this is a message to um, all of the people that are trying to be mindful, go about their business and not be really involved in that conversation. We have to bear in mind that they've worked out a way to kind of put us all together in the same conversation, even though we're not. So be mindful of your goings. Um, I'm going to take some time to process what's happened anyway uh, and see if I can get any help in regards to, uh, obviously, the injustice that's occurred. Because just because I look a certain way should not mean that I enter a conversation when, in fact, my life reflects the total polar opposite of the allegations. So big up everyone. Obviously, friends have been very supportive. Work have been very supportive. I'm yet to tell all of my family members because I come from a very dramatizing family, let's say. If I told them, um, it could escalate even more. So now I'm more on a patient um, slow thing, should we say, and more of um, a relaxed uh, approach towards the next few days. You know, I wanna take it easy, take it slow and speak to the right people see if I can get assistance. So yeah, man, I hope you guys benefited from my testimony. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have information that could perhaps help me. Um, and yeah, man, big up and stay out of trouble because London's burning right now. Today's the 1st of August. I'm in Pimlico somewhere, Pimlico station. I just got arrested by these people behind, wrongly accused. So I will be chasing up with this. 